All right, so you've probably seen Zin pouches in locker rooms, TikToks, or maybe even your teammates' lip during warmups. But here's the real question. Are these little pouches helping or hurting your game and your brain? I'm Dr. Mark, I work with athletes, concussion recovery and performance optimization, and I'm here to break down the real science behind nicotine and athletic performance. So first, why are athletes using Zin? Zin and other nicotine pouches are exploding in popularity, especially in team and winter sports. I know that uh, my teammates in college were always thrown in a dip or a chaw. Why? So athletes say it helps them focus, manage stress, suppress appetite, and stay sharp in pressure situations. And biologically, that makes sense. So nicotine does activate your sympathetic nervous system. It releases dopamine, norepinephrine, and acetylcholine, which are all chemicals tied to arousal, attention, and memory. But here's the twist. Just because something feels effective doesn't mean it actually is beneficial, especially in the long term. The actual science shows that the performance effects of nicotine are mixed. A 2017 review in sports medicine found that out of 16 studies, 12 of the studies in sports performance and nicotine found no benefit. And so among the other four, to kind of round out the 16, two showed some improvement, but two showed actually worse improvements. So we've got ergogenic aids that improve your performance, and then we've got ergolytic aids, which aren't always talked about, that decrease your performance. So among 16 studies, 12 showed nothing, two showed ergogenic effects, and two showed ergolytic effects. Not so great. The few positive effects that were observed, mainly vigilance and reaction time, those tended to show up in lower doses in first time users. But those effects fade quickly as tolerance sets in. So in simple terms, you're not boosting your performance, you're just chasing normal. Sort of like caffeine's crash or pre-workout tolerance, nicotine gives and then it takes. So how does nicotine work? Like what's the science, what's going on behind this? Nicotine works by binding nicotinic acetylcholine receptors in your brain, especially two types. We've got the alpha-4, beta-2, and the alpha-7. So the alpha-4, beta-2 receptor is the big one behind addiction. So when nicotine activates it, your brain releases dopamine, the same feel-good chemical tied to motivation and reward. It's sort of the anticipation of the reward. And that's part of what makes nicotine so habit-forming and addicting. The alpha-7 receptor plays more of a role in cognitive processing, things like attention learning and memory, and some researchers are even studying this for Alzheimer's disease. So yes, nicotine can trigger chemicals linked to focus, but these effects are short-term, context-dependent, and highly variable in healthy users. This is where the biohacking hype can get a bit dangerous, because most of the performance boost you feel is just a chemical jolt, not a real enhancement. And over time, that jolt fades unless you keep upping the dose. So this is where I'm gonna sound like your dad and start wagging a finger. Nicotine is highly addictive. It hijacks your brain's reward circuits, especially in young users. So nearly one in five young adults tried nicotine pouches in 2024. So 20% of the people. Nicotine is highly addictive. It hijacks your brain reward circuits, especially in young users. In fact, nearly one in five young adults tried nicotine pouches in 2024. So if you surveyed young adults, if you surveyed five people, at least one of them had tried a nicotine pouch. And many of these people had never smoked. So that means these products aren't there to help people quit smoking. It means it's hooking new users. The big one is Zin. So Zin delivers three million milligrams or six milligrams per pouch, but some brands actually go up to 12 milligrams. And that is a massive dose, especially if it's used repeatedly throughout the day. The health risks, you know, keep wagging my finger here, but the health risks, nicotine raises your heart rate and blood pressure, which increases strain on your cardiovascular system. So for my young athletes, that means your heart is working harder, not smarter. Like it's not working harder for any particular reason. And if you're doing that under the physical stress of exercise, why? Nicotine, particularly the pouches, can also damage gum tissue in the lining of your mouth, leading to recession, irritation, and oral lesions over time. And these changes often go unnoticed at first, but over time they can both impact your oral health, but also your overall recovery. And nicotine slows down wound healing, which matters more than you think. So whether it's a cut, a bruise, stitches, or just muscle damage from training, delayed onset muscle soreness, recovery takes longer when nicotine is in the mix. There's also evidence linking nicotine use to mental and emotional effects like anxiety, irritability, mood swings, and difficulty focusing. Uh, so these effects are especially common during withdrawal or with frequent use, and they can show up in athletes 
even in athletes with no prior mental health history. So these aren't just long-term health risks, they're performance risks. If you're serious about mental clarity and showing up at your best, nicotine works against you, not for you. And because I work with a lot of folks dealing with concussion and post-concussion, here's a special note for you guys. Nicotine may impair blood flow to the brain. And so in concussion, during a time when the brain is already sort of in a vulnerable blood flow state and an energy deficient state, that reduced perfusion can slow down healing and potentially prolong symptoms. It can also mask post-concussion symptoms, so fatigue, mental fog, low motivation, making it harder for athletes to recognize whether or not they're fully recovered. And because it's a stimulant, nicotine can also give you a false sense of readiness. So as much as it can mask symptoms, it might also fake that you're better. And it might potentially lead athletes to think they can return to play too soon before the brain has properly healed. So this increases your risk of re-injury or prolonged recovery. So if you've had a concussion, nicotine isn't necessarily neutral. It can disrupt the recovery process and trick you into thinking you're game ready when your brain would actually say otherwise. Now again, I'm going to pick on Zinn here for a little bit because they've really capitalized on the marketing machine that is TikTok. Zinn really isn't just like a nicotine product, it's a brand that's been seen viral on TikTok. 79% of hashtag Zinn videos show it in a positive light using humor, lifestyle content, and like influencer culture. Only 5% of the content show it as a smoking secession aid, like to help you quit smoking. So instead, it's portrayed as fun, focus enhancing, enhancing and harmless. This isn't just about what it does to your body, it's also about what marketing does to your mindset about the risks of what this is actually doing to your body. This isn't harm reduction, it's harm redirection, and athletes are sort of in the crosshairs here of the marketing campaign. So again, at the risk of sounding, you know, like old and I'm wagging my finger, Zen may look clean, discreet, edgy, fun, but the truth is it's not really a nootropic that you want to take. It's not a performance hack, it's an addictive substance with real health costs, especially if you're an athlete or recovering from a brain injury. So if you're serious about your health, your focus, your long-term brain function, I would ditch the pouch. There are better ways to perform at your peak. So comment below if you've seen Zinn in your locker room. I'm sure that you have. And if you learned something, you liked the video, even if you didn't like the video and you learned something, give it a like, hit the bell, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. It's free for you. It helps me. I appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Dr. Mark.